kahapon lang, ikadalawamputlima ng Pebrero ay napasok ng bansang Russia ang bansang Ukraine at nagsimula na ang kinatatakutan ng marami ang digmaan ng dalawang bansang ito. Which begs the question, if God is the God of peace, then why does He allow wars? Let's talk about this here on Pursuing the Savior. What is going on? My name is Archie and welcome to Pursuing the Savior. I'm a pastor and a writer and I have a passion for helping people understand the Bible and find their way back to God. And that's what this channel is all about. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing and hit that little notification bell so you won't miss a thing. And if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to like or follow our official Facebook page, Pursuing the Savior. Let's get started. The conflict between the two nations of Russia and Ukraine has been a source of concern, of alarm over the past several years. And most recently, ay mas lalong tumaas ang tensyon sa mga bansang ito. And to think that this conflict happens in the midst of the pandemic, one can only think kung ano ang posibleng magiging epekto nito sa mundo, kasama na ang Pilipinas. According to experts, ay pag may ganito kalaking klase ng digmaan, ay aasahan na natin ng iba't ibang klase ng mga epekto. And since Russia... It's such a huge oil exporting country ay asahan na natin na mas tataas ang presyo ng mga produktong petrolyo na atin na pong nararanasan sa mga sandaling ito. Of course, kasama na rin dyan yung pagtaas ng presyo ng mga pangunahing bilihin, pati na yung pagglobo ng inflation rate, and not to mention the amount of destruction and the loss of life na magiging dulot ng digmaang ito. And as of this video, ay mahigit 135 na katao na ang namamatay doon sa Ukraine. In light of these events, ay maraming mga Kristiyano ang nagtatanong, hindi ba si Jesus ay ang Prince of Peace? Then bakit niya hinahayaan na magkaroon ng digmaan? God willing ay makapag-provide tayo ng mga biblical na kasagutan sa tanong na ito. But one thing that we need to understand is that wars are a reality of life. Here's what Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 and 8 say. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What this verse means is that God is sovereign over all things. Siya yung nagtatakda ng nararapat na panahon para sa iba't ibang mga aktibidad ng mga tao dito sa lupa. Hinahayaan niya tayo na maranasan yung kapayapaan pero hindi ibig sabihin nun na magiging madali palagi ang buhay. At minsan, kasama sa mga pangyayari ay ang pagkakaroon ng sigalot o digmaan. Let's try to understand conflicts. Saan ba nagsisimula ang mga ito? It only takes two people to start a conflict. Ganon din naman pagdating sa mga bansa. Kailangan mo lang ng dalawang bansa na hindi nagkakasundo para magsimula ang isang digmaan. Wars between two or more nations are the result of a basic human condition. Yung kasakiman o yung pagiging makasarili ng isang tao. Here's the truth. Man, outside of God's guidance, is innately evil. At itong mga ganitong klase ng sigalot, nagsisimula yan sa puso pa lang. Listen to what James has to say in James chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. In this passage, James tells us the root of every conflict. People who are driven by their selfish desires. Hina-highlight dito ni James yung envy o yung pagkainggit, which is a kind of sin, a kind of evil that has the potential to kill and destroy. The word fights in this verse 
comes from the Greek word polemos, which is used of an armed conflict. Ibig sabihin, merong mga armas na involved na pagdating sa konfrontasyon o dun sa sigalot ng dalawa o higit pang mga tao. Therefore, isinasadarawan dito ni James ang isang bayulente na klase ng pag-aaway ng mga tao. On the other hand, yun namang salitang quarrel ay nagmula sa isang salitang Griego na ginagamit para i-describe ang isang klase ng pag-aaway ng mga tao na hindi involved ang anumang klase ng armas. Ito ay isang klase ng alitan ng mga tao na walang involved na armas, hindi siya ganun kabayulente, pero gayon pa man ay ito ay sigalot pa rin na hindi dapat nangyayari, lalo na sa konteksto ng isang iglesia. On the other hand, the word passions comes from the Greek word heidone, which means a desire for pleasure. James here is speaking to a group of people who are envious and filled with selfish ambition leading to discord. In fact, ang discord na ito o yung sigalot ay humanto na sa matinding pag-aaway. James is addressing an issue of outright evil. Matinding kasamaan ang root cause ng mga pag-aaway na ito. Hindi lang ito simpleng misunderstanding or disagreements between brothers and sisters, kundi ito ay napakasama at hindi espiritual na klase ng pag-aaway. Therefore, this is a serious crime requiring a serious response. Itong passage na ito ay makatutulong sa atin para magkaroon tayo ng mas malawak na pangunawa kung paano ba nagsisimula yung mga conflict on a personal level at kung paano yan nag elevate katulad ng mga gyera. Who is to blame? God or man? Now again, the question is, if Jesus is the Prince of Peace, then why doesn't he stop conflicts and wars? One logical answer is, is that he gave us free will. He wants us to make that personal choice of submitting our will to him and subduing our evil tendencies. Thing is, war is a choice. Ibig sabihin, we always have the power to say no to it. And yes, I understand that it can be far more complicated than that. And it's not always easy to make the right choices. But with free will comes consequences and we have to live with those. Ang mga digmaan ay paalala sa atin kung ano ang hitsura ng isang klase ng buhay na hindi nagpapasailalim sa kapangyarihan at sa kalooban ng Panginoon. Isang klase ng buhay na markado ng pagrebelde sa Diyos at hindi pagsunod sa kanyang mga kautusan. Well, let me make myself clear. God is not to be blamed for wars. Just as we cannot blame Him for evil, for sin, and hell. We are solely responsible for the consequences of our choices and we are accountable for our own actions. The Bible is not just a book that encourages people to live God-honoring lives. Instead, it is also a historical document of real people with real stories coming from real nations. In the Old Testament, makikita natin ang Diyos na inuutusan yung mga Israelita na makipagdigma sa iba't ibang mga klase ng tao at mga bansa dahil ito ay kinakailangan. Dahil may mga bansa na umakto sa labas ng kalooban ng Panginoon at kanilang pinahirapan yung ibang mga bansa at dahil doon, gagamitin ng Panginoon ng mga Israelita para ibigay yung katarungan na hinahanap ng mga biktima. We have to understand that this world is filled with selfish, ungodly people who are willing to do anything and everything just to get what they want, even if that means hurting others or even killing others. And because of that, wars are inevitable. God allowed these things to be written for us to see the results of people's misunderstandings, disagreements, and making choices outside of God's will. These accounts show us kung ano ang nangyayari kapag tinanggal natin ng Diyos sa equation at mamumuhay tayo ayon sa ating sariling kagustuhan at mga plano. Having said that, makikita din natin kung paano sovereignly 
providentially ay nililikas ng Panginoon yung mga taong sumasampalataya sa Kanya sa gitna ng isang digmaan. Bukod dyan, ang mga istorya tungkol sa mga gera ng unang panahon ay makikita natin para magbigay sa atin ng kaalaman o makita natin yung kabutihan at yung kasamaan ng tao. And hopefully, habang binabasa natin yung mga accounts na yon ay matuto tayo mula sa mali ng iba. But let me get this straight. God does not enjoy watching people killing one another. He is the God of order. He is the author of life. Sa kanya nagmumula ang buhay. And no, kailanman ay hindi ikinatuwa ng Panginoon, ikinasaya niya ang panoorin ang mga nilalang niya na nagpapatayan. But then again, He gave us free will. And sometimes we human beings tend to be out of control. At minsan, hinahayaan ng Panginoon ng mga gera para makita ang resulta kapag hindi natin kinokontrol ang mga sarili natin. Ang unang pagdating ng Panginoong Heso Kristo sa lupa, isa siyang bata at hindi siya dumating para makipagdigma. But when He returns, things are gonna be way different. Because when he returns, he will be a conquering king. The world will see a kind of war that it has never seen before or never since. In Revelation chapter 19, the Bible describes the kind of war that Jesus is going to wage on his enemy. He will come as the commander of heaven's armies and the ultimate judge of all mankind. That day will be bloody and many people will die. What's even more alarming is that he will not show compassion. Wala siyang ipapakitang kahabagan doon sa mga taong nagre-rebelde sa kanya, nagmamatiga sa laban sa kanya, and ultimately, he will send them into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, also known as hell. Meron yung Bible commentator na nagsabi, Jesus will use warfare to put an end on warfare. Sa muling pagbabalik ng Panginoong Heso Kristo, hindi lang siya darating dahil makikipagdigma siya at parurusahan niya ang makasalanan. He will also come to establish everlasting peace. When He returns and when He reigns in Jerusalem, the peaceful kingdom of God prophesied in the Old Testament will be finally realized. Let's read Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4. He shall judge between the nations, and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Bago darating ang Panginoong Heso Kristo, asahan na natin magkakaroon at magkakaroon ng mga digmaan. O papanong nakikidigma ang mga kaaway ng Panginoong Yesus sa kanya sa pamamagitan ng kanilang rebelyon, ay gayon din ay magpapatuloy ang mga digmaan at mga sigalot hanggang sa muling pagbabalik ng Panginoong Yesu Kristo. When Jesus returns, the world will experience peace like it has never had before. Companies that make articles of war, katulad ng mga baril, kanyon at mga tangke at mga rockets, at iba pang mga bagay na may kinalaman sa digmaan ay magsasara kasi wala nang pangangailangan sa mga bagay na ito. In fact, mawawalan na ng military academies dahil hindi na kailangan mag-aral para dito. Because the world will be marked by perfect peace because the Prince of Peace has come to reign on earth. In conclusion, God allows wars to happen to show us what it means to live a life outside of His will. We humans find it easy to disregard God and His Word, live our lives according to our will, and that's where conflicts begin. And sometimes God allows wars to prevent greater evil. He does so not because He enjoys watching people kill each other, but simply because people just won't listen to Him. God is patient, extremely patient, but sometimes he allows wars as a last resort. 
In the future, Jesus will come and wage war against Satan and his followers to put an end on satanic influence on earth. But after that, he will establish peace on earth. Peace that is everlasting and it's true in its fullest sense. I'm hoping that this video was able to give you some enlightenment concerning wars and why God allows them. And please do not stop praying for Ukraine. And we have brothers and sisters and kababayans in that country fleeing for their lives, worrying about their safety and that of their families. So we put time to Miguel sa pananalangin on their behalf and may uh, the world do something about this and help those who have been oppressed and may God render justice on those who have crossed the line and uh, sinned against Him and people. If you want more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our official Facebook page. And with that, my friend, I'll see you on the next one.